Washington did not just slay the Seahawks of 2013. They slayed the Seahawks of 2021, which are a far different creature. As we are seeing week in and week out, it is depressing to see Russell Wilson play like not Russell Wilson, to see Pete Carroll coach like not Pete Carroll. And I'm not taking anything away from the Washington football team. Not not easy to win a primetime game in your home stadium when it looks like it's maybe half full. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Right. Maybe half full. But they, they got it done. And they, they've won three in a row coming out of their bye. And they're a team that we have to pay serious attention to down the stretch. No doubt about it. Not out of the NFC race. Not out of the NFC East race with the way their schedule sets up. The fact that they still got – you know, Dallas twice. Of course, the Giants one more time. What is it? The Eagles? They got the Eagles two more times as well. So there's a lot of football here to be played when it comes to the NFC East. And yeah, these bottom these bottom six, seven seeds in the NFC, they're still up for grabs. Now, I still like San Francisco to get one of those no matter what. So I just look at it to go, no, it's going to be that seventh seed that's up for grabs. But there's some things to certainly respect and like about the Washington football team and how they play. Um, now, they dominated a game last night, and I would have liked to have seen, you know, Riverboat Ron put them away at some point. I mean, absolutely dominated the freaking football game. And then, you know, you go through a period in the third and fourth quarter where you have three third and ones in a row and you just try to run it up the middle on Seattle who's got nine people at the line of scrimmage. You know, I'm old school. I'm all for that. But when there's nine guys at the line of scrimmage and they're just playing run, geez, can we call something else and put the game away? Because you dominated a football game and – just never found that moment to go, oh, wait, I'm going to do this right here to put it away. And you rolled the dice. I mean, they rolled the dice. Just an absolute ass whooping that came down to a two-point conversion, and they almost went into overtime. So that's not cool. That frustrated me as the game went on. I kept going, man, I'd like to see a riverboat run, play action or bootleg or something here just to put this away. And, uh, of course, it was a good – it was a good – watch for some reason even though it, was, it wasn't the most exciting game in the world 41 minutes plus for washington time of possession so they, they really did dominate. dominate and they tried to put it away late with a fourth and goal right that that looked like it had a chance of being a touchdown catch but after further review it was clear and obvious that the ball was not caught by tight end logan thomas they could have tried the field goal there i know that with joey sly injured right. on that two-point conversion run they were being very judicious about the use of a kicker but you know I, I, I don't I don't know how you do the analytics when you got your backup kicker as the one who'd be trying the field goal. I don't know how you plug that into the formula. So they went That's for tough. it. Nice little semi-sidearm throw. Look it at that slow-motion NFL film spiral. He had the ball, but when it came down, you know, it took him a while to get the right angle. And they finally did find the right angle that showed it wasn't a catch, and that gave the Seahawks life. Did you really and, think and it they wasn't made the a most catch? of it? You, you were okay with them overturning that? Yeah, there was one angle where the, 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 the clouds parted, and it's like, that's not a catch. There was one angle. It's that one there. You see it bounce, hit the ground, and bounce. When they finally dialed that one up, and that's one of the benefits of a primetime game with all the extra cameras. Sometimes, you know, when you're the when you're the number six game on the CBS rotation that day, you only get like two cameras, or maybe three. But but uh, they had that angle that came in late that made me say, okay, that's enough for me to to say that he didn't catch it. Yeah, I I, I don't know. It, to me, again, it, it's a tough one. Uh, I, I probably would have let the call in the the the, the field stand. Uh, that that's just. How I looked at it. Now, listen, I understand it does Pete, touch Pete the agrees. ground. Pete, I don't care if you agree. <laughs> Pete, I don't care if you agree. We're having a conversation here. Go He's ahead. speaking for the, the common, common fan. fan. How the dare you, The common fan Matt, didn't have Mike. a voice in this show either, Pete. It's me and Chris. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead, but Chris. I, I, I do look at it, and, and I, I don't know. I had a hard time with that being overturned. I, I did hit the ground. I agree with you. I do think it touches the ground. But I also think he had his hand underneath it, and I didn't get the feeling that he ever lost control. Yeah, the ball moved a few millimeters. I mean, man, if we slow every catch down to like, I, I hear you. You know, but but it but still, let that me was say clear this. and obvious. I, I don't know. I'm old school in one certain way, and there's something I don't like. I don't like the ball should never touch the ground. 
I don't like this. Well, okay. the ball can touch yeah. the ground. If the why you we want to make the rule clear and obvious. Right. Let's just say the ball can't touch that the ground. That might be the way to this go. This all started. Yeah. This all started because the Buccaneers had a chance to slay Goliath 22 years ago, and Bert Emanuel had a ball that. And when you go back and look at it, you know, because there was this, oh, that should be a catch. He had both hands on the ball, and it just happened to touch the ground, but he still had both hands on the ball. It still kind of moved a little bit. Yeah. Like, I, I'd be curious to see how it would be officiated if that exact right. catch right. happened today. But, but I'm a firm believer in the ball should not touch the ground. And if we would ever accept that... Then I we can don't get have behind any of that this stuff. Yeah, the ball just shouldn't touch the ground. Yeah, I like that, Mike. That's probably the easiest way to clean the whole situation up and stop dealing with it because it is. It's too hard to tell on those ones. And I think we had one last week or the week before in the Seattle game. They had an interception. It was very similar. It's just it touches the ground. Does he have control? I don't know. Uh, you're right. It's a flip of the coin either way. You know. Yeah, that was a big moment in the football game. We know that. I mean, that was huge right there. Uh, Washington, who had dominated the game, like you said, and then there they are, can finally put it away. Doesn't happen. Nice little throw by Taylor Heineke, certainly, but left the door open for the Magic Man. And, you know, there he was. The Magic Man drives them down and hits a wide-open player down the middle of the field, and, man, did it get scary. Uh, Seattle's got their issues, I know, but, man, Washington, hey, if they could – you know, you look at the way their defense is playing right now. You know, got some good players in the secondary. Jack Del Rio has upped his creativity on the defensive side of the ball this last second half of the season as compared to early on. They can get a little healthier up front. You know, they can you think, be. You think it's, you think it's Del Rio or do you think it's Ron Rivera? Well, yeah, that's, the good, that's the good question. I don't know. You know, they ended last year with being so dominant and kind of vanilla because they were just like, our front four is good and we're going to let them dominate – and we'll play real basic on the back end and won't mess up. But this year they came out with the same formula. And, you know, we talked a lot early in the year, right, where the defensive line just wasn't dominant. Chase Young, you know, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, they weren't dominating the game like we thought they would. Montez Sweat got hurt, and uh, the, the vanilla scheme didn't work. So you're right. Maybe it is Riverboat Ron getting involved there, certainly. But uh, they're a formidable defense right now, certainly. And if they can get a little healthier on the D-line, yeah, they're going to be a pain in the butt uh, if they do sneak in the playoffs. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.